Welcome, everybody. Uh, so this is uh, a little out of the ordinary colloquium. I'm super excited uh, today because uh, we have Pramvera Hisseini visiting us from the Republic of Kosovo. And we normally uh, don't hear of astronomy in the context of uh, the Balkans and particularly Kosovo, a small country. Um, and that's because there hasn't been any until Pram decided that there needed to be. And so she has uh, she is the director of Astronomy Outreach of Kosovo, uh, which is a, an organization that she founded uh, to uh, bring astronomy to the people of Kosovo, go around doing star parties, doing education. And, uh, and so she's done that over the last couple of years. It's been incredibly successful. And what's really intimidating is she's currently still an undergraduate at the University of Christina. Uh, so uh, she's here to tell us about that adventure that she's been on of, of uh, bringing astronomy to a country like Kosovo. Uh, please welcome Premvert Hisseini. So uh, first of all, I want to thank Mr. Jonathan McDowell for inviting me to be here at the finest institute of the world uh, at the Harvard, which is a dream for me, actually. And uh, I am from Veravisani, from the Republic of Kosovo, and I'm 22 years old, actually. And I major in geography at University of Pristina. Actually, I'm also the founder of the Astronomy Outreach of Kosovo, which is the largest nonprofit astronomy outreach program in our country. And its mission is to share the science and educate the, the youth and the general public about space and science. Actually, uh, I want to let you know that English is not my first language, so if I don't speak very good, don't mind me, please. So I'm going to share the story uh, since the computer has gone to sleep. Uh, for all of you who has never heard of Kosovo before, I have just put a map here to give you guys a clue where we are. So there is Europe, and we got the Balkan Peninsula. So the Kosovo is the red one, which is this, and it's surrounded by Albania, Macedonia, Montenegro, and Serbia. As you can see, we are really a small country. and. Actually, we are the youngest country of Europe. We got our independence in 2008. And before that, we have been really going through a lot because we have been going through the war times and things like that, which is very difficult for a nation. So we have been also part of the former Yugoslavia. So uh, I think all of you have heard of that before. And being under communist power, it wasn't easy because you didn't have the freedom. And if you, if you don't have freedom, that means that you can't do what you want. And people in Kosovo couldn't do or have what they wanted. They couldn't have education, which was the most powerful weapon to change the world. And in Kosovo, we speak Albanian language because Kosovo and Albania were as one country before. But later on, the politics has separated these as in two countries, but we are the same nations. But what happened after that, under the communist power in Yugoslavia, was like the Albanian schools and Albanian books were not allowed, and the people in Kosovo could not get educated. So, some of the people, they decided to, to ch teach their kids secretly and uh, keep the books secretly. Otherwise, if they would catch you having these books, you would go straight to jail. It was very difficult. So one of these people that actually wanted to learn this way was my dad, who was a teacher for over than 40 years. And he teached for about 10 years without even getting a penny. He just wanted to educate students and not to let our nation behind in everything. So this thing was going on over and over until one day people wanted to do something. They wanted to have freedom. They wanted to be free. And the war started in the late 1989. So we have had the war for two years, but Thank 
thanking United States and NATO who has helped us and helped to stop the genocide that was going on very bad in our country. I am alive today in this stage and my family is alive back in Kosovo. So the war was over, but in the end of the war, something like that, it was 1999, there was something really interesting going up in the sky. And I was only four years old. So we had a solar eclipse in our sky. As you can see the map, it was really close. We couldn't see the totality, but we could see most of that. And it was spectacular in the sky. But it was so different because people in Kosovo were not informed about this and they didn't know what the solar eclipse is. They were not educated about astronomy. They didn't learn about astronomy. Some of the people actually were so scared. They thought it's going to be the end of the world or stuff like that. But I remember my grandfather took me and my family out. He wanted to show us the eclipse in a safe way. And he told us not to be scared. Don't make panic. It's just the moon going in front of the sun. He took a bucket filled with water and he was trying to show us the solar eclipse through that. And it was very interesting. I remembered that. And somehow it captured my attention. I was saying, well, there are things in the sky that are spectacular. There are incredible things happening. We should know more. And I was four years old. And then later on, I was growing up. I remember my sisters were trying to teach me the solar system planets because they were older than me and they they teach a little bit, you know, about very basic solar system stuff. And I was not yet in the school when I knew when Pluto was a planet back then. <laughs> I also remember I heard of NASA on TV on the news. They said like NASA discovered this and NASA did this. I thought that NASA was a man that does discoveries. <laughs> Actually, just later on, I understood that NASA was a, a group of people that does incredible stuff in space exploration. So every day I was going out there looking up at the sky. I live in a very small village far away from the city, and you can see the Milky Way, you can see the stars, and the sky somehow it make me love it and look for more. But of course, you cannot know more if you don't have the right equipments. You cannot see enough just by the naked eye. I wanted to have a telescope, but I couldn't because you don't find a telescope to buy in Kosovo. So I founded a Facebook account that time, and I tried to connect with people who has the same passion as I, who are astronomers from other countries. So I met an astronomer from a neighborhood country. His name is Dragan Radmilovic. And he decided to give me something that I was dreaming for so long. He wanted to give me a telescope. So, my goodness, somebody that I never ever met in person. I just met on Facebook and he, he wanted to give me something that it was, it just changed my life forever. So he gave me this telescope. It's a three inch reflector. And I worked so much with that. This was my very first time when I got it in the school and I was presenting it, it in the class. And I was very nervous because it was my first time. Everybody was excited about the telescope. You know, I was trying to tell them how it works with emitters. I, I barely could learn how to set it up though because I never seen a telescope in real life. And I was doing events a lot with them. But then it was time to start the high school. And in Kosovo, we have gym gymnasium high school with two directions. You have the natural sciences and social sciences. So you have to choose what you want to be. Of course, I wanted to be an astronomer, an astronaut or whatever like that. And I had to go to the natural sciences, but when I went there, the number of the students was full. So I couldn't do it. My goodness, I couldn't be a scientist. 
So I had to go to the other program with social sciences, which I was really not interested at. I did that for two years. The whole gymnasium program is three year studies. So in the last year, this was the professor of astronomy who teaches astronomy subject in the natural sciences. Her name is Suleyme Gogoli. She heard of me and she said, who is this girl from the other program that is doing astronomy and she's not supposed to? <laughs> so she decided, she made a trouble. She wanted to grab me and take me to the other program. And she did that. In the last year of studies, I changed my program. Even though I could risk the final exam, I still didn't care because my dream was bigger than that. So after I changed my program, part of the, of the science group within the school, I was doing events with this little telescope. I only had this small solar filter so we could see at least sunspots during the day, otherwise you could not see nothing. And during the night time we could see the moon, we could see the Saturn ring, Jupiter moons. And it was fascinating because people, people never had the opportunity to look through a telescope before. Even though for, for you guys it might sound very, very a simple thing. It was very new for us. So, I went a lot in these schools, and later on, I was, when I was doing outreach events, I was sharing pictures on Facebook and with people and in the news and everywhere, and international astronomers really got so interested in that. They saw how much I like to work, but I didn't have the equipment. So, all these companies you see up, up here, including the Charlotte Bates Solar Astronomy Project with director Mr. Stephen Ramson, which is located in Atlanta. They sent us a bunch of equipments, solar telescopes, go-to mounts, solar glasses, planetary cameras, planispheres, atlases, books, all of this stuff. Because in Kosovo, we don't also have books enough to learn astronomy in our language. This was one of the reasons why I had to learn English to, to learn more astronomy. Otherwise, I couldn't probably know this much. I didn't know this much, but anyway. So, yeah, after I got all these equipments, I still was by myself. And I said, well, I got enough telescopes, enough glasses, then why not to, to create something that we can join all together as a group and we can work as one? So... In 2015, January 10, I founded the Astronomy Outreach of Kosovo as a nonprofit organization. And within two and a half years from now, we are 100 members. Can you believe that? And each of them is so excited about astronomy. They come to the events, they, they set up the telescopes, they learn, they, they observe, they are so curious. I really want to thank, thank them a lot. And, we also have a professor of astronomy who teaches astronomy in the gymnasium in Kosovo. His name is Milan Rushiti, who is always with us. He helps us to do lectures sometimes in the school, set up telescopes, explain us. He's just great, and other members do. So when I founded this, I was just by myself. I still was alone as a group. I was alone just as a OK. But two months later, after I found it, it was March 20, there was a partial solar eclipse going on in the sky, was going to happen. And I said, well, this time we have solar telescopes, we have solar glasses, then why should I now do some kind of event, probably in the square of the city, where people can come and look at the eclipse in the safe way and not to make panic like in back 90s or something like that. So I decided to do that. And this was the event that happened. All this amount of people showed up, even though we had just three small telescopes, you can see them. We had people from the government, from the ministry, from Albania, from Macedonia that heard about this and they traveled just for this day to see the eclipse and we shared solar glasses for free. 
I also put some display with pictures and books and stuff that people could look at them. And it was very difficult to manage all that by myself. I was like taking care of this telescope and that and that, and my mom was taking care of the books and my dad there, my brother there. All my family was trying to help me because it was difficult to manage all these people. And it was right then when I met these guys who today are members of my team and we work together. It was in this day I met people who got very excited about astronomy and this really worked out well. And after after we, we met and we were doing outreach events, we were trying to learn, we became really good. These are just some of the events and some of the members. I just wanted to show some pictures with you. When we have been to other places, we do outreach events during the daytime, solar astronomy during the nighttime. We try to involve ourselves in everything, in every field of science because um, there is nobody that can teach us, so we try to teach ourselves somehow. We have members who are very interested in radio astronomy. There is Ramis Bechai who is trying to build a little radio telescope with a satellite dish, so he wants to, he wants to teach us more about radio astronomy. There is Nyon Zabarbadovsky, who is also very interested in spectroscopy. She makes a spectroscope with a prism and all this stuff. It's very exciting. Sometimes we also go up and uh, make astro camps, just our team, without other people, because when you do outreach, you don't have too much time for yourself. So we go out there and we study. We like to take deep sky images. We like to do uh, other stuff that we never done before. And we get invitations from school every day. We just put some of the pictures here from some of the schools we have been at, but we have been like, hundred events and it's very exciting because when we go to a school it's much different because they get so excited about that they look at the planets or the sun they learn we give out flyers and solar glasses which is very great really and the next slide I have put here from our events is I just wanted to tell you guys that no matter what age you are or what profession do you have, or what race, or religion. Astronomy is for everybody. All of us are humans living in this planet. And this planet is just part of the universe that we all should know about it. So, this is also another historic event that AOK has done last year for the transit of Mercury. It was in the capital city of Pristina in the square. When we have these phenomena like transit, solar eclipses, lunar eclipses, or something spectacular, we like to go mainly where much people are, like in the, in the square, to reach more people and involve more people to that. So you can see many people showed up to look the transit of Mercury. But what was the most astounding thing was like when we wanted to share the solar glasses, we have our member, Visar Azemi, who's the tallest, so we always have to give him the glasses. So, see, all the people were trying to reach him, even though you can see the transit of Mercury through the solar glasses, but they were still excited to get them. And after we did all this work, for a really short time, we did a lot. International astronomers were really excited, and they wanted to introduce us to their places. So they invited us to travel abroad to Kosovo. We have been invited to go to Switzerland and to Italy, the first trip of AOK. -OK. So we went to visit the Department of Science in Zurich in Switzerland. And after that, we have been to Museum of Science and Aviation, Volandia in Milan of Italy. And there was a NASA moon rock display just for three days that astronauts of Apollo 14 has brought to Earth. So for the first time, I've been able to see a real moon rock. And I also was inside of a replica capsule of um, Apollo 16, Casper. And I got into that. It was really exciting. And it was something new for us because to see these things for the first time in our lives, it meant a lot. Then after this, we got more invitations. 
we went to we were invited to go to Australia to participate in the International Sunday Convention by uh, invited by Mr. Rob Black and we went down there and we have seen solar stuff which is very good in different wavelengths hydrogen alpha calcium K visible light all these about solar astronomy but except that we also had the opportunity to see observatory for the first time to see domes to see a planetarium and have a planetarium for the first time it was last year can you believe it and we also seen big telescopes like this for the first time but above all we also met astronomers and discoverers here is Mr. Terry Lovejoy who discovered six comets it's incredible and then we met Jonathan Bradshaw who is a discoverer of asteroids and double stars and then Greg and Peter who are the boss team for supernova search and from all these guys the, each of them were teaching us some things so it was enough for us because we were getting knowledge gaining experience in different fields and it was very very positive thing what was something else interesting in Australia was it was a meteor crater our friend Jonathan took us to a meteor crater to explore that wow it's a crater and I was inside that so <laughs> with the magnetic detection we were trying to look for samples to find some pieces and get them even though we didn't find any but it was still great to look at that and something else that was even more interesting was the southern skies gosh when I went down there I felt lost everything was new for me constellations stars objects everything new and it was very good to observe new things new stars learn constellations and experience that above all so it was a very great trip then these are two of the images because except that we do observation our team also likes to do uh, images to share it with people and tell people how it looks through a telescope so these two images we got them from Australia from Brisbane and it was very good because in Australia Mars and Saturn were really high in horizon and you could image them more better than really down in Kosovo so I mean they don't look very very good but we can still see the casting division and all that then this is our very first deep sky image of Dumble Nebula. It's it's not very well focused, but it was very we were very happy. It was the first deep sky light in our camera. And these are also some more from the Sun and Luna and uh, Orion Nebula and some more of the Sun in different wavelengths, M fifty one. And after all this work and travels we did for all these years. It was time for us to host international astronomers for the first time. As I mentioned earlier, Mr. Ramsden from Atlanta, director of Charlie Bates Solar Astronomy Project, decided to visit us for 10 days last August. And it was just incredible. People for the first time met a professional astronomer, international, who came to visit us. And we did outreach events together we held seminars he teached our kids and students and people he studied mathematics and nuclear uh, physics nuclear physics so he does a lot of solar astronomy and all these equipments are donated to us by him and we really want to thank him so much and so also the TV wanted to invite him and just have him because he was also hosted by the government and the Ministry of Education because it was a very great honor for us to have him. As I mentioned medias, just wanted to let you know that we also get a very coverage by the medias in Kosovo and we are really thankful. Anything that happens in the sky, they let us know, they invite us, so we go there, we tell the people that they can see what they can see, what's the magnitude, or if it will be visible from us, and how it will be looking, if we do an event or something like that. So it's very great because they help us to promote the club, the, the team, and then other people can hear about it and join us. Then, 
The latest thing was last September we launched a project in collaboration with the Ministry of Education, Arsene Bayrami. So we launched this project with the missions in the high schools. So what we actually do, we go to the high schools and we set our telescopes, we observe. But before that, we make a lecture about what we are going to observe, how it will be looking like, and something about telescope too. And the reason why we do that is that the high schools in Kosovo, they learn astronomy, but they, they don't do practice. So we want to make the theory in practice. It's very simple. If I tell you all the day here about the moon, it looks like this and that. It's completely different if you just look for one minute in the telescope and you will understand it all yourself. So that's what we want to do. And it's really great. We really are well thankful to the ministry. And the latest thing was we were invited to come to the United States. And we have been to all these places up there. We have been here for a month now. We have been invited at Texas Art Party. We were the keynote speaker. Then we visited the McDonald Observatory, the 10 meter meter telescope, and at Kitt Peak, at Mount Graham, and all these lists you can see. We were also at Space Fest in Tucson in Arizona. And there were 26 astronauts from NASA. There were also Apollo astronauts that walked on the moon. And I talk to them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and there were also scientists and astronomers. And we met all of these people. We grew up reading about them. And it was such a great moment to meet them and knew that these people really exist. And it's, it was such a great feeling. Then we went also to the meteor crater and there, we did a mini documentary, which I would like to play right away now. And then we will be back here again. Just give me a second. Kosova ka ardhur në një vend të eksploroj diçka krendryshe. Këtë gjendemi tek krateri i meteorit në Arizona, i cili është afër qytetit e Flagstaff, dhe kjo grup që përshini kjo krater është kryuar para 50.000 vite dhe nga një asteroid i cili undesh me tokën e në atë kohë. Êshtë me të përtet shumë i matë, ka diameter dikum bi 1 km dhe ka thelsi rrët 170 metra. Pra është me të përtet përbërja pekërësht prej hekorët, sepse asteroidi cili gotiti këtë krater kishtë të përbërja nga hekore, dhe është me të përtet diçka interesant, shu është me të fëtirë, sepse vetër në këtë njërë mund të adimë se si mund të rëzikot toka nga këta trupa qëllorë të cilët jenë e nda cak në sistemin të ndjellorë dhe gjdo ditë mund të andeshen me tokën dhe mund të shkaktojnë katastrofa për ne. Në sistemin të ndjellorë ka një numër të konsideruashëm të asteroideve të cilat shtërien kryesish në mes të Marsit dhe Jupiterit. Me gjithat, egzistojnë asteroide edhe në afërsi të tokës. Atmosfera tokës bombarduot vazhdimisht nga këta trufa të vëgjit qëllorë. Sa po fërkohen me ajrin, ata digjen dhe në rastin më të keq, ata mund të shkaktojnë edhe dëme në tokë. Meteori që ka koditur këtë vend, ka kryuar këtë krater për më pak se 10 sekunda. A i ka qenë duke levizur me një shpejtësi prej 18 km për sekundë. 
Pasi që këmë të orë ka goditur këtë vend, a i ka hedhur dikurët 175 milion ton material jashtë kraterit. Që nga formimi, me ndohet se kraterit i ka humbur pak sa forma e theksuar, për shkak të eruzionit natyror. Objekti që kryoj këtë krater ishte një meteori hekur të rrëth 50 metra. Kjo është njëra prej pjesve të meteorit e cila është me ma dhe që është gjithër brenda kraterit të meteorit që sa po e kemi vizituar. Thank you for your patience. So, did you learn any Albanian? <laughs> yeah. So, I was just letting you know where we have been, and it was such a great thing because in Kosovo, the largest telescope that is in the whole country is an 8 inch Newtonian that I'm aware of. And when I came here to these observatories, they had telescopes like 10 meters, 8 meters, and 4 meters. And you cannot see a small telescope like in our country. And I thought, well, my telescopes look like a finder scope in compared to these. <laughs> and it was very good because we never had the opportunity to observe through these telescopes. And in each observatory we have been, we have got special tours. We have stayed until late, we observed, we saw the operating rooms, the, uh, how they polish the mirrors, how they work with them. And it was just incredible. And right now I'm here and I'm really happy. <laughs> so where else we will go? We also will speak at Skyscrapers Astronomical Society in Rhode Island. We will go to Hyden Planetarium with Tracy. She's my host here for until July 15. Thank you very much, Tracy. So I hope to meet Neil deGrasse Tyson, by the way. And then I will go to Florida at Kennedy Space Center, we will visit Stephen again, to Marshall Space Flight Center to see the Space Camp too, then to Wisconsin and Michigan astronomy tours, and then the total solar eclipse, the fourth one that I will see in my life. And it's just a lifetime trip. So I just wanted to come back again in the beginning of my very first outreach event I've done. And if somebody would come and tell me at that time that one day I would go to all these places and meet all these people and see all these things that I have only dream of, I would have, have never believed that. But now I do. And I want to show and to prove it to all of you guys that if you love something, you really work for it and don't give up. Because I guarantee you that if you work very hard for that, you will reach it no matter what it is or no matter how hard it is. We know that it was very difficult to land in the moon too, but we did that. So everything is possible. And I just want to thank everybody for making this trip possible for us because just now I understood how less we know about astronomy and science and telescopes because we don't have equipment and we don't have much books and stuff like that. And I tell you guys that how lucky you are to be here in this university and study and with all these professors and these great equipment. You're very lucky, I just envy you. <laughs> and I'm very thankful to the members of our team back in Kosovo because I'm so sure that if we didn't work together as one, we wouldn't be here today. Because everybody did something, everybody did its contribution. And within two years, we did a great job. Everybody recognized it, okay, which is very good. We're trying to create contacts to work with people, with astronomers, with scientists, work as one, make great discoveries, observations, and just make our dream true. I don't want these kids in Kosovo to grow up and say, oh well, I am from a small country and I cannot do nothing. No, 
That's not really true. Actually, we are also part of the world and we can make a change. So this is what we do. We inspire others, we educate others with very little thing. No matter how poor you are, or where are you from, or what race you are, or religion, or whatever, you can still do things to change the world. So thank you very much for having me here. Thank you, Jonathan. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, if any has any questions, please feel free to ask. I might have forget to add anything. So um, it sounds like Facebook was a big part of you kind of like starting this whole journey for yourself. But um, how does social media or how does AOK utilize social media now since it has such a big platform? Actually, we have a Facebook page with the same name, Astronomy Outreach of Kosovo. And we use it very much. We are very thankful to Mark Zuckerberg for inviting us. <laughs> <laughs> and because <laughs> with uh, each uh, event we have, we promote that. And in each event, we get really so many people that uh, attend our events, like 500 people. So we're not talking like for 30 or 50. We always have very much people because people uh, now are following us. They can like our page. We share our pictures after we do that, and it's somehow a great connection. It's really great how we connect with people just through Facebook. Thank you. Any other questions? I'll ask, um, uh, so when you made your first trips to Australia and so on, you came back, how did that change? Uh, how did you flow that back into the outreach you were doing in Kosovo? So how did the, the, the other people in Kosovo benefit from that? It was very, very a big thing because when I was down there, I learned new things that I never knew before. I saw new things, I saw observatories, and just right at then I got the idea of why should we not also have an observatory, for example. And they showed me all how they set it up, how they made it, the equipment, with very little thing that we also can have it. They also showed me the discoveries that they have done with very small telescopes which made me believe that we can also find something new in the sky with the small telescopes we have. Only if we keep looking up, you never know. So now we are planning to make a new observatory in Kosovo, actually the first observatory, because we don't have these in Kosovo planetariums or institutes that does for astronomy. We also don't have any department which, which is for astronomy or astrophysics or planetary sciences. So this is the reason why I had to study geography instead, and I love astronomy more. And yeah, so it was a very big impact because we brought also uh, planetary cameras and other stuff that they supplied us in Australia, and we use them now, and we it's very different, we know more, and I'm sure that all this experience and uh, knowledge I'm gaining here with four month trip in the United States it's going to be a big impact for our team and for our country, not just for me as a person. Yes? Do you think your organization in the future might be able to develop curriculum for the schools? Or is that something you're already working on? Actually, we are trying to work with schools more. As I mentioned earlier, we are uh, working with the Ministry of Education. So this is somehow a way we are trying to cooperate all together and just spread more astronomy in schools and make some how go there each year, make like a program, I would say, and do more even. So this is somehow I would call it like that, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? Yes? So is this what you're gonna do with your career? Is this what you see what you see yourself doing after you graduate from university? Do you wanna keep growing this? Actually, I'm very happy that now IOK has grown big enough, so even though I, I do something else, it doesn't need my help, for example, because the team are very good at doing things by themselves now, but actually I'm, uh, my dream is to study planetary sciences, but we don't have it in Kosovo. We only have geography, that's what I'm doing. And uh, I am almost to graduate, 
And when I do that, I don't know what I'm going to do because uh, if I stay in Kosovo, that means that I cannot do what I want. If I move abroad, that is what I want. And uh, that's just a way that I should see how to do that because it's not easy to, to move here or study here or get a scholarship from because I'm international. So, yeah, I will see what I can do, I hope. <laughs> Question yes, you so had some I, questions. I actually had the same question. What what your future plans oh, are? Oh, thank you very it much. Sounds, it sounds very good. Best best luck and wishes. Thank you very much, and thanks a lot for having me here today. It was a, the, the greatest honor to be in this university with you guys, and I wish you the best luck with your studies and to make great discoveries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, So all of this is just shows what a small amount of investment in you know a, a group that that really needs help can achieve. Uh, it was just a few uh, little things from Stephen and so on that really made you guys take off. Exactly. And, uh, and, uh, so you find the right people to help and you help them. Yeah. Thank so you thank so you much, Jonathan. Thank you.